Dear viewers, in the last session, we discussed compromise, arrangement and reconstruction. In this session, we are going to discuss mergers, winding up and dissolution. The objective of this lesson is to explain mergers in public interest, merger of banking companies, demerger and reverse merger. In addition to this, the lesson also explains the concepts of winding up and dissolution and compulsory dissolution. Section 235 and 236 Power to acquire shares of shareholders dissenting from scheme or contract approved by majority. Where the scheme of reconstruction or amalgamation involves the acquisition of shares of transferor company by transferee company, the transferee company may do so by making an offer to transferor company so that the scheme may be placed before the members in general meeting of the transferor company. The shareholders have the option to approve the offer within four months. The consent must be given by at least nine tenths of the shares whose transfer is involved. This number must be exclusive of any shares already held by the transferee company or by its nominee or by its subsidiary. Section 235, subsection 1. Notice to dissenting shareholders. After the approval of the nine tenths majority is accorded, the transferee company gets the right to acquire the shares of the dissenting shareholders, if any. Within two months, after the expiry of above four months, the transferee company should give a notice to the dissenting shareholders that it desires to acquire their shares. Within one month from the date of notice, the dissenting shareholders may apply to the NCLT. However, if no application is made to the NCLT or the NCLT rejects the application, if made, the transferee company is entitled and bound to acquire the shares on the terms on which the shares of approving shareholders are agreed to be acquired. It must be stated that Section 235 confers a very wide discretion on the NCLT to sanction or to disallow the attempt to acquire. In exercise of power under this section, the NCLT is guided by two fundamental principles, namely, the scheme should be fair and conscionable. The onus of proving that it is unfair and unconscionable lies upon the dissenting shareholders or members. Section 235, subsection 3, class B. Adequate information to dissenting shareholders should be given. Section 237, amalgamation of companies by central government in public interest. If in the opinion of central government, an amalgamation of two or more companies is essential in the public interest, then the central government may, by order notified in the official gazette, provide for amalgamation of those companies into a single company. The amalgamated company so formed shall have such constitution, property, powers, rights, interests, authorities and privileges and its duties, liabilities and obligations as may be specified in the order. The order may also contain consequential, incidental and supplementary provisions as may be necessary to give effect to the scheme of amalgamation. The section protects the interests and rights of members and creators of the amalgamating companies and shall have nearly as possible the same rights and interests 
in the amalgamated company as they originally enjoyed in the company before amalgamation they shall be entitled to compensation if their rights in the amalgamated company are less than those which they had earlier in the amalgamating company the assessment of compensation may be made by an authority prescribed by the government for the purpose and it shall be paid by the company formed as a result of amalgamation before any order for amalgamation is passed by the central government it must send a copy of the proposed order in draft to each of the companies concerned so as to enable them to file objection if any and give suggestions the period for filing objections shall be prescribed by the central government the copies of every order must be placed before both houses of parliament at the earliest possible time section 238 registration of offer of schemes involving transfer of shares in an offer of a scheme or contract involving transfer of shares under section 237 the circular containing such offer and recommendation by directors to members to accept such offers is to be accompanied by such information in such manner as may be prescribed a statement by the transferee company disclosing the steps it has taken to ensure that the necessary cash will be available should be made every such circular has to be presented to the roc for registration and is not to be issued unless so registered the roc may refuse to register a statement for reasons to be recorded in writing if it does not contain the requisite information or which sets out the information in a manner likely to give false impression the roc has to communicate the refusal to the parties within 30 days and appeal lies to the nclt against the order of refusal by the roc a director who issues a circular which has not been presented for registration is liable to a fine between rupees 25000 and 50000 section 239 preservation of books and papers of amalgamated company the books and papers of amalgamated company shall not be disposed of without the prior permission of the central government section 240 liability for offences before merger liability in respect of offences committed by officers in default prior to merger is to continue after merger amalgamation of banking companies section 44a of banking regulation act 1949 approving from rbi for merger of banking companies instead of nclt in case of merger of two banks in the place of nclt the bank should take permission from rbi section 230 demerger a scheme of subdivision of an enterprise into smaller units or splitting up the unit into more than one or separating one or more units from the main enterprise and constituting them into a separate units is called demerger reverse merger when a sick company acquires the profit making company it is called reverse merger winding up or liquidation dissolution of a company represents 
the last stage in its life it means a proceeding by which a company is dissolved the assets of the company are disposed of the debts are paid out of the realized assets and the surplus if any is then distributed among the members in proportion to their holdings in the company according to professor gavar winding up of a company is a process whereby its life is ended and its property administered for the benefit of its creditors and members an administrator called liquidator is appointed and he takes control of the company collects its assets pays its debts and finally distributes any surplus among the members in accordance with their rights the company is not dissolved immediately at the commencement of winding up its corporate status and powers continue till it is dissolved winding up precedes dissolution types of winding up according to section 270 of the act there are two types of winding up winding up under the order of nclt or compulsory winding up voluntary winding up there are two types of voluntary winding up members voluntary winding up compulsory winding up section 271 of the act deals with compulsory winding up grounds for compulsory winding up inability to pay debts section 272 subsection 2 deals with inability to pay debts nclt may order that the company may be wound up if it is unable to pay its debts a company shall be deemed to be unable to pay its debts in the following cases statutory notice firstly if a creditor to whom the company owes a sum exceeding 1 lakh rupees has served on the company a demand notice requiring the company to pay the amount so due and the company failed to pay within 21 days or provide an adequate security restructure or compound the debt to reasonable satisfaction of the creditor decreed debt a company shall be deemed to be unable to pay its debts if the execution or other process issued on a decree or order of any court in favor of a creditor of the company is returned unsatisfied in whole or in part commercial insolvency if it is proved to the satisfaction of the nclt that the company is unable to pay its debts special resolution according to section 271 subsection 1 class b of the act if the company has by special resolutions resolved that it be wound up by the tribunal but the nclt is not bound to pass the order of winding up and it is discretionary acts against sovereignty if the company has acted against the interests of sovereignty and integrity of india the security of the state friendly relations with foreign states public order decency or morality sick company if the tribunal has ordered winding up of the company under chapter 19 for having a sick company fraudulent conduct of affairs the tribunal is of the opinion that the affairs of the company have been conducted in a fraudulent manner or the company was formed for fraudulent or unlawful purposes default in filing financial statements if the company has made a default in filing with the roc its financial statements or annual return for immediately preceding five consecutive financial years winding up on application made by roc if an application made by the roc or any other person 
authorized by the central government by notification under this act the tribunal is of the opinion that the affairs of a company have been conducted in a fraudulent manner or the company has been formed for a fraudulent or unlawful purpose or persons concerned in the formation or management of its affairs have been guilty of fraud misfeasance or misconduct in connection therewith and that it is proper that the company may be wound up just and equitable clause section 271 subsection 1 clause g of the act provides that the tribunal can order winding up of a company when the tribunal is of the opinion that it is just and equitable that the company should be wound up the discretion of the tribunal under this clause is very wide and the courts have exercised this discretion on a variety of grounds which may be generalized in the following categories deadlock in the management of a company where there is a complete deadlock in the management of the company the tribunal may order winding up on just and equitable ground in re yanidji tobacco company limited 1916 to chancery 426 two cigarette manufacturers w and r who were trading separately agreed to amalgamate their business by forming a private limited company of which they were the only shareholders and the directors they had equal voting rights and therefore their disputes were to be resolved by arbitration but one of them dissented from the award they became so hostile that they were not even on speaking terms with each other thus there was a complete deadlock and therefore the company was ordered to be wound up although its business was flourishing well loss of substratum the substratum of the company is deemed to have been lost where the main object for which the company was formed failed to materialize in german date coffee company 1882 20 chancery division 169 a company was formed for manufacturing a coffee from date under a patent which was to be granted by the government company and also for working other patents of similar type the german patent have never been granted the company embarked on other patents but on a petition of a shareholder the court held that the substratum of the company had failed and it was impossible to carry out the objects for which it was formed and therefore it was just and equitable that the company should be wound up mismanagement and losses the tribunal is justified in ordering winding up of a company under the just and equitable clause where it is not possible for the company to carry on business except at losses and there are no prospects of achieving profits oppression of minority shareholders by the majority it would be just and equitable on the part of the tribunal to order winding up of a company where majority shareholders have adopted oppressive or squeezing policies towards the minority shareholders fraudulent or illegal purpose where a company has been conceived or brought into existence fraudulently for some illegal purpose it is justified and equitable to order its winding up where a private company is in essence a partnership where it is proved that an incorporated private company is in substance a partnership it may be ordered to be wound up when there is abuse of power or breach of good faith which the partners owe to each other public interest winding up can also be ordered under this clause when public interest demands it compulsory order 
when there is a voluntary winding up. In addition to the above grounds, the tribunal may also make a winding up order in respect of a company which is being wound up voluntarily on a petition presented by any person authorized to do so under section 272 of the act or official liquidator. The tribunal may make a winding up order on such petition only when it is satisfied that the voluntary winding up cannot be continued in the interests of the creditors or contributories due to liquidators incompetence or failure to fulfill statutory duties coupled with unwillingness of the majority of contributories to replace him. Section 272, subsection 1 of the Act provides that a petition for the winding up of a company may be presented to the tribunal by any of the following. The company. When the company has passed a special resolution, resolve that it may be wound up. Any creditor or creditors, including any contingent or prospective creditor or creditors. A creditor or creditors may file a petition for winding up of the company on any of the grounds stated in section 271 of the Act. Any contributory or contributories. On the commencement of winding up of a company, its shareholders are called contributories. Any contributory or contributories may present a petition for winding up. All or any of the above parties, whether together or separately, or the ROC. According to section 272, subsection 1, class E, and subsection 4 of the Act, the ROC is also entitled to present a petition for winding up on any of the grounds of winding up by the tribunal except the second, namely that the company has passed a special resolution. Central Government's Petition Section 224 enables the government to petition for winding up where it appears from the report of inspectors appointed to investigate the affairs of a company under Section 206 that the business of the company has been conducted for fraudulent or unlawful purposes as explained in subclauses 1 and 2 of Class B of Section 213. The government may authorize any person to act on its behalf for this purpose. Section 272, Clause F where a company is already under voluntary liquidation or under winding up by the tribunal and such voluntary winding up cannot be continued with due regard to the interests of the creditors or contributories or both, the petition for an order of its winding up may be presented by any of the persons mentioned above by the official liquidator as provided in section 272 of the Act. Powers of the Tribunal According to section 273 of the Act, after hearing a winding up petition, the tribunal may dismiss it with or without cause, may make any interim orders as it thinks fit, appoint a provisional liquidator of the company till a winding up order, make an order for winding up with or without cause, any other order it thinks fit. The tribunal can also issue a conditional order of winding up. Commencement of winding up. According to section 357 of the Act, winding up commences not from the date of the order, it shall be deemed to commence from the time of the presentation of the petition. But where before the presentation of the petition, a resolution 
has been passed by the company for winding up the winding up shall be deemed to have commenced at the time of the passing of the resolution in any other case winding up by the tribunal is deemed to commence from the date of filing of the petition company liquidator and their appointment company liquidator according to section 2 subsection 23 in so far as it relates to winding up of a company means a person appointed by the tribunal in case of winding up by the tribunal by the company or creditors in case of voluntary winding up as a company liquidator from a panel of professionals maintained by the central government under section 275 subsection 2 of the act the terms and conditions of appointment and fee payable is to be specified by the tribunal according to section 281 of the act the liquidator has to submit within 60 days of the winding up order a report to the tribunal advisory committee according to section 287 of the act the tribunal may constitute an advisory committee to advise the company liquidator and to report to the tribunal on matters which it may direct the committee is not to consist of more than 12 members they should be from among the creditors and contributors and other suitable persons according to the requirements of the company according to section 288 of the act the company liquidator has to make periodical reports to the tribunal at least at the end of each quarter about the progress of winding up dissolution of company according to section 302 of the act when the affairs of the company have been completely wound up the liquidator has to make an application to the tribunal for dissolution of the company once the tribunal passes the dissolution order the company has to file a copy of the order with the roc within 30 days by going through this lesson the viewers will come to know different kinds of mergers and grounds for compulsory dissolution i hope you enjoy this session and we will meet in the next session thank you thank you one and all